Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. How to be a leader. Hey, what's up? This is Pete Scott here, sales and business mentor for The 1%. I'm so excited to bring you this video again, live from Italy, because this is one of the topics that I'm super passionate about and one that if you are in business you will already be experiencing this thing of leadership even if you're not in business though and you're just studying up maybe you're a student right now knowing these leadership qualities and being able to embody these qualities is so so crucial in whatever you do leadership is not just about running a business leadership is about leading yourself you might be the captain of your sports team you might be uh, running a community group who knows but the skills the strategies and mindset that I'm about to share with you over the next 10, 11 minutes are fundamental for life, fundamental for whatever you decide to do. So stick around, stay till the end because I'm gonna go over three steps specifically that are the foundation of being a great leader. Before I go into those three steps though, I want you to bear this in mind that leadership is not a job title, it's a behavior. You can be a manager but not be a leader. You can be a supervisor and supervise 20, 30 people, but still be a poor leader. There is a difference. And there's a reason why, and I want you to think about why some people we will follow to the edge of the earth. We will stay late for them. We will put in the extra effort, the extra time. We'll go far beyond our job or life description. But others, we, we are repulsed by them. We literally, dread the thought of waking up and having to go and be micromanaged by that individual. Because once again, leadership and management are different things. If you want me to do a specific video on the differences between a manager and a leader, let me know in the comments because I'm very happy to do that video because again, that's another fundamental theme because leadership overall and management are huge topics. They cannot be discussed fully in a short video. But what I want to share with you in this video, because it's so relevant for the time right now with having my team here in Italy, we're going over so many, we're doing deep work in the psychology of my team. And the reason why we're doing that is because I don't want a team that simply show up to work and do the job. I want my team to be amazing. And if you watched my YouTube video yesterday, you would have heard me say, I want my team to be the best they can possibly be. And leadership is so many things but if you grab a pen and paper or even write in the comments so you just find a way to remember what i'm going to say the first and foremost thing to know is that to be a leader is not to overpower others or to manage others if your focus right now is only to manage others then you're coming from a place of lack you're coming from a place which is not going to be empowering others remember this your job is not to overpower your job is not to micromanage, but it is to empower. The best way for you to have power in life is to empower others so they can find what they are great at, so they can work within their zone of genius. One of the big meetings that we've had here while we've been in Italy is to tap into my team's zone of genius. Where are they phenomenal? Because when we got here, it's, it's like playing chess and the chess pieces weren't necessarily in the right, right place when we first got here. So by the team heading off and, and really defining their roles and understanding where they are great, we were able to create more clarity in what they can bring to the business. So they can all show up at work each day and be able to deliver. But overall, I want you to know this, that being a leader means that you're not just leading from the front. Sometimes you have to lead from the back. You have to have trust in your team. I see so many managers and I consult for hundreds of companies every year and I come across these managers who are great people, but they've forgotten that 
most important thing, which is to trust others, to allow them to grow, to allow them to make the mistakes, to allow them to feed back on themselves and say, hey, this is where I could have gone better so they can do it again. Most of the time with management, what we're doing is we're just trying to fix things. We're out there being fixers, putting out fires. Have you ever felt like this? If you lead a team, are you, do you feel that it's quicker for you to do the job yourself? It might be quicker in that moment and it might resolve the problem in the moment, but what's it doing for your team members? What's it doing for their journey? What's it doing for them to be empowered? Sometimes the best leader is the one who can actually throw back that problem in a positive way so your team member can develop themselves, so they can problem solve. Because if they problem solve themselves, the next time they run into the same problem, which they will, they will not associate you as a solution. Instead, they will associate themselves stepping up and finding the solution. I believe that everybody wakes up in the morning and says they want a great day. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be micromanaged. And that's the issue. We are not there. You are not there. If you're not managing anyone right now, you will be at some point in your life. But you are not there to micromanage. You are not there to motivate. Management, leadership is not about motivation. Find people who are already motivated and then do the work to coach. And these are the three things I'm sharing. To coach, lead, and then manage. That's your three roles as a leader. To coach means you bring the best out of each individual within your team. You ask them the questions, where do they wanna go? How do they see themselves achieving it? Allow them to bring their ideas to the table. Now, I'm not asking you to be passive by any means because you need to step up and you need to be the person that you would want to follow. Because by leading by example in that sense, that's gonna allow your team to see that you are true to your values. Because your team do not remember what you say, they remember how you act. They remember how you make them feel. So, it is about, first of all, coaching. Supporting your team in every way that you can by coaching them. Ask it, sitting them down. This afternoon, I will be sitting down with each of my team members individually for at least 45 minutes each. And you might say, but Pete, I haven't got time to do that. I challenge you and say, you've not got time. You've, you've not got time to not do that. <laughs> Sit down with your team, coach them, find out what their ultimate goal is. Find out from them, where do they see themselves bringing what I call tangible value to your business. And then from there to lead, is to train, that means to build them as a human being, to get them to a point where they too become leaders. You do not want wage slaves. The most important thing is to have people who are on board, empowered, and they feel they can bring something to the role. There's been a huge study around this where they found out that people are not necessarily motivated by money. Money helps. But actually, people are motivated through purpose, through feeling they're a part of the bigger picture. They're not just a cog in the wheel, that they actually make a fundamental difference in that community, that group, or that business. They're also motivated by autonomy, having the freedom to, to come and go as they please, but not in, a pas not in a blase way, in a way that they can allow their creativity to flow. That's how you get the best from people. And then the third thing is that they are getting better. Are your team getting better every single day. I'm Maximilian Newton. I'm the sales director at SSA. Um, really, really love what I do. Um, I love sales. I've worked in it for about eight years now. Um, live and grew up in London. Um, we are on the cusp of doing some really amazing things and it's really, really beautiful being a part of it. I'm Leanne and I am Executive Assistant in SSA. So I work very closely with Pete to make sure that everything runs like clockwork and you know he gets everything that he needs and the business is functioning and everyone is communicating the way that they need to. I'm in Italy currently with SSA and Pete Scott, really, really excited to just be a part of everything that's going on um, and the movement. SSA is more than a movement. Um, I'm just, or oh, it, it really speaks to me that this is probably the first 
thing or entity to really go out there and say, look, sales is okay. Sales is important. Um, and we're really spreading the word and we're saying to people, look, don't avoid sales because it's, it's just so necessary for going out into the world or the marketplace and transmitting your idea to consumers and, and, and people and, and friends and building relationships. It's, it's absolutely vital, the psychology of selling. Um, Italy, I mean, we've traveled together before. We went on a cruise and that was very much about strategy. Um, Italy has really been about coming out of context, you know, getting out of our environment so that we can refocus. Um, and also to immerse ourselves in the business you know business isn't always like smooth flowing there's always ups and downs so you know addressing challenges and really moving forward together and tapping into the deep root and core of who we are as individuals and what we can actually bring to the business to make it the best it can be well as a leader already I understand how difficult it is balancing the needs of the organization or movement or campaign alongside that of dealing with the micro needs of your your, your team um, one thing that Pete does incredibly well and I'm learning so much from him and I'm learning new things that I can take to my sphere of work but one of the big things I've really learned from him is just always be teaching um, he's incredible in that he could take a really tiny situation such as me bumping <laughs> the front of the car in Italy today into someone else's car and he really turned that into a big lesson and I walked away thinking wow <laughs> do I really need to like change how I think he's just really really good at um, teaching me and the team to think better um, and all the techniques and strategies that I strategies that I'm using and learning um, I'll use and I know this will make me a better leader and, and later on down the line in my life hopefully it makes me a better father better partner better friend better leader it will do <laughs> but um, yeah it's all it's all incredibly exciting stuff that um, I've got the privilege of just being around someone like that every day. To sum up Pete's leadership, it's, 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 it's incredible. Um, we are learning um, at immense rates and, and, and we're growing and he's a great leader because he can put himself into that space where he can look out for the business but he also is um, very uh, interested and passionate about helping us as individuals to be the best version of ourselves and I'd say his, his technique and his leadership is not one dimensional it's multi-dimensional and what I've really seen um, in myself and all of the team members which has been amazing is a shift in mindset and we've come from thinking very um, I'm trying to think of the word um, like an employee an individual and about our own personal circumstances and really come together to think of the bigger picture and how we can make an impact um, and make a difference to ourselves and others. To summarise, I want you to think about these other th three things. Are you simply leading your team by completing the tasks? And that means that you have a job list to do. Most people in management positions think that that's what leadership is about. Well, I get my job done. It's not. Your job is to not only complete the tasks, but also to develop the individuals. Develop the individuals with your team. Are they better as human beings today than they were three months ago? Is your team a winning team? Are you allowing them? This is the other thing. Are you bringing the team together to say, how do we be the best possible team that we can be? I don't care if you're running a salon right now, an insurance company, a car manufacturer, leadership is needed everywhere. Throughout history, we've looked to great leaders because leaders make change. Leaders transform 
industries. They can transform the world. You have more impact in the role that you play than you can even care to give credit to. I don't care if you're 19, you're just starting out, or you've been in, leadership, you've been in a management and leadership role for the last 25 years. Everybody can take from being a better leader. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Check out my next YouTube video because I've got something really special for you tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm gonna leave you with this message. Don't simply look to complete the tasks of life. If you wanna be a great leader, and I know you can be, it's about ensuring that the people around you are also able to thrive. And that means that you will have some difficult conversations. That means that you won't just be a nice guy or girl. It means you will have to step up and you will have to lead from the front in your behaviors, but lead from the back in allowing your team to go out there and be the best they can possibly be. If you do this, I promise you that you will get so much more from your team. You'll get so much more fulfillment in what you do, in the business that you run, the community group that you, that you are a part of, and you don't need to be a manager to be a leader. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.